The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. Well, howdy everybody. Welcome to the show and to the beautiful bluegrass state of Kentucky, where today we're at Woodard Whitetails of Kentucky and we'll be showing you some great big whitetail deer. Kentucky is one of the best states there is in the entire country to start a deer farm. And we'll be telling you why. We'll also introduce you to the folks at the Kentucky Alternative Livestock Association. And they're the folks that oversee all the deer farmers in the state of Kentucky, and they'll be happy to help you. There's no better people to help you get started deer farming, and we'll be at their annual event on today's show. The white-tailed deer is America's favorite big game animal, and white-tailed deer farming is the fastest growing segment in the American agriculture industry. Our program's mission is to dive into the world of deer farming and discover why tens of thousands of Americans compete to create the biggest bucks in the world. And by the biggest bucks, we don't just mean the size of the antlers. The financial investment opportunities produced even on small parcels of rural land will blow you away. Join me as we discover how whitetail genetics, deer auctions, animal husbandry, and so much more drive the deer farming industry. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Over the years, I've done a lot of stuff with Henry Woodard, uh, whether it's hunting at his ranch down in Texas or uh, whether it's up here in Kentucky looking at his beautiful deer. So I've known Henry for a long time and I know him very well. I'm Dustin Blosser, the ranch manager here at Woodard Whitetails of Kentucky. We are in Glasgow, Kentucky, about 40 minutes outside of Bowling Green. I also manage the preserve that we have. We run around 50 or 60 hunts each year when it comes to our breeding program, we're aiming for big typical deer at one or two years of age. We sell a lot of bucks as stalkers here. We'll sell bred does and breeder bucks. Anything's for sale, anything you need. We have a good variety here and we'll work with the farmer to get the genetics that they're looking for, whether it's wide, tall, or a combination of it all. All right, so as you take a look at the bucks around the country, uh, you know, we've been looking at uh, what I call visible traits to be able to breed with for years and years. I mean. Y'all have done it. Henry's been doing it since he was down in Texas, okay? And But now there's invisible traits. Tell everybody about how important that is for the breeding future here at Woodard Whitetails. I think if you don't get into it now, you're going to be behind. That's where the industry has to move to, to keep going with the future of regulations. And what it is, we've got chronic wasting disease. If you're not familiar with it, chronic wasting disease is a disease that's been around for over 50 years, okay? And it started out in Wyoming and Colorado and stuff where there are not even any deer farms allowed over there. But deer farmers have been targeted and thinking that's where the, the disease is originated from. And that's not true. But science has given us this invisible trait, these invisible traits that we can breed to have our deer less susceptible to chronic wasting disease. And that's what's going on here. So tell them how it's done. So we sent off a tissue sample and they'll tell us our GEBV score, which will let us know how susceptible our deer are to CWD. One easy way to do it is to get tissue using a uh, new dart DNA dart, isn't it? Yes. And y'all do that all the time, don't you? Yep, we send off our whole herd this year. And so what happens is there's basically uh, three different type of uh, genetic profiles you can get on, on a deer that can be a GG, GS, or an SS. I mean, there's more, but those are the three primary ones. And what everybody's saying in the in the deer breeding world, they're trying to get away from the, the Gs. Okay, so if we can go to SSs, the SSs are less susceptible, according to this new science, this invisible trait, uh, they're less susceptible to CWD. And so y'all are doing it, I'm doing it, and most of the breeders as we move in the future are doing it. So the GEBVs are a huge part of the whole entire building of the future of the deer herd. We are trying to do the push for both of those Kentucky does not have any CWD as of now, but it's preemptive for us to try to get ahead of the curve. And it is so cool because now we're able to actually not just breed for big, beautiful deer, but the healthier deer through these invisible traits that we can now get. Yeah. 
Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by MVP Whitetails, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, Rafter P Construction. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube. All right, so how old are these guys? These guys are all two years old. Man, that's a nice group of two-year-olds. How many of them in here? Uh, there's about 30 in this pen here. Okay, anybody special in here? These are pretty much stalkers for us. Really? Yeah, we'll sell a few of these guys for breeders for other people, but yep. we don't have any breeders in this pen this year. The breeders that they've got at Wooded Whitetails, I mean, we're gonna, we'll be highlighting them throughout this show and you're gonna be able to see why they're breeders. But these guys right here, take a look at these two-year-olds. These are some nice two-year-olds. So we talk about stalkers, okay. Uh, payday comes for a deer farmer when he sells deer, okay, only when he sells deer. And stalkers are animals that wind up going to stock ranches and they go because the genetics are fantastic. See what happens in Kentucky, Indiana, Texas, Florida, you name it. Hunters typically go and shoot the biggest that they can. Okay, and they shoot the genetics out. And it's for that reason, like you know, people wind up want these genetics so they can rebuild the genetics in the herd. And these genetics are actually better than the genetics that people had the native genetics on their land. As you look at these guys, keep in mind, there's some in here that are big, but there's not gonna be breeders at Wooded Whitetails, but other breeders around Kentucky are buying deer up like this to breed in their herds. Yeah. But if you wanna come out here and you wanna take a look at deer at Wooded Whitetails of Kentucky, give them a phone number. It'll be 304-698-5798, and I'm here seven days a week. Well, he's here eight days a week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is a really nice group of two-year-olds. I mean, like that guy right there, he is absolutely beautiful. But let's right now take a look at uh, some other bucks out here at Wooded Whitetails. I think you're gonna be impressed. All right, so all I can say is, wow. I mean, these guys look good. These guys have to be the breeders. Yeah, these are the breeders we had from last year. How many you got in this pen? Uh, there's 10 in this pen. Three-year-olds? Uh, we have one three-year-old in here. Everybody else is two. Really? Mm -hmm. These are all big bodied, healthy looking deer and their antlers are just amazing. I'm trying to pick out the three year old right now and I can't. Which one is it? It's that yellow tag over there. Whew, look at that guy. So that is actually a Mr. Incredible Fool brother. Just okay. a few years younger when we re redid that breeding. He's, so you duplicated that breeding then? Yeah, we lost Mr. Incredible there a few years ago and he's produced great for us. And we just got another copy of him. Wow, check that out. Okay, and that is the cool thing about uh, the deer breeding business. We can actually uh, deliberately breed to create an animal that we want to genetically. When we take a look at Mr. Incredible's uh, NADAR certificate uh, and we take a look at this guy's NADAR certificate, we can create the exact same thing. And that's the cool thing about deer breeding. So tell me about these other guys in here. Uh, like, who's that guy? So that is Jack Jack. He is a Mr. Incredible son. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so who's that guy right there? So that's Quartermaster. Man, okay, tell me his pedigree. So he's out of that same orange 57 doe that is Mr. Incredible's mom, Shock and All's mom, the three-year-old there, but he's out of brain freeze. So that's part of our move to go for the CWD code on resistibilities. We know he's at least a GS, um, but we're sending in a sample on him. Everybody's now moving this way within the deer breeding business. And you mentioned brain freeze, and brain freeze is an SS, okay? So that's where people want to move. Uh, brain freeze is over at Jesse Boger's place. We, we have been over Jesse's many, many times. George Tunall is now a partner. Jason Milligan's now a partner. Brain freeze is a deer that's helping people move towards that SS marker, which everybody's trying to do. So that deer right there, odds are, well, we know he's a GS. And yeah. very well may be an SS. Can't wait to get the results back, huh? Yeah. Yeah. 
And so these deer right here, uh, y'all are gonna breed all them this year. Yeah, we'll, we'll breed a few of these guys in this pen and then we'll bring up some yearlings. Okay, and so uh, do y'all sell breeder bucks like this? Yeah, we sell, we sell breeder bucks every year. Uh, we'll sell two-year-olds and yearlings depending on what the guy wants. We might sell one or two of them in this pen as breeders this year and everything's for sale. Okay, so the people that wind up buying these breeder bucks, explain who those people are. So we have a lot of new farmers that get into it that will end up needing a breeder buck and we have some farmers that just need new genetics or are looking to get better genetics on their farm that come in and they'll buy something off of us. There's a lot of deer breeders in Kentucky and there's more every single year because Kentucky is one of these states that it's like, I see nothing but blue sky for Kentucky. The Kentucky is under ag instead of wildlife like we are in Texas. The ag department gets deer farming. They understand a lot better. The future in Kentucky for deer breeding is phenomenal and the future for people that wanna have agricultural careers like Dustin. I mean, it's deer breeding is a perfect fit. I mean, you think about this. I wanna tell you on something, Henry Woodard, the guy who owns this place right here, I've known Henry for, I guess, 20 years now, a long, long time since he had a, a farm down in Texas. Uh, Henry is one of the guys in the deer industry. He's a legend. I mean, he really, truly is a legend. Uh, he knows these pedigrees inside and out. And uh, you look at these breeder bucks, you look at all the bucks on this place, and you look at a lot of bucks around the country, uh, they are the result of Henry Woodard's uh, breeding. And, and that's a fact, okay? And Henry Woodard, anybody in Texas that's been in the deer breeding business for any length of time, knows or remembers Henry Woodard and he's up now in Kentucky growing deer like this on a consistent basis. So uh, if you're thinking about getting into the deer breeding business in Kentucky, I think first off, Kentucky is probably one of the best states there is in the country to do so. You need to stop at Woodard Whitetails in Kentucky before you buy deer from anybody. Lots of people you can buy deer from, but you need to come at least take a look at what Henry's doing because I think you're gonna be blown away. Give them a phone number, that way they can call and book some time with you and come out and take a look at this place. You guys can come out and look, just give me a call at 304-698-5798. And I guarantee you, you're gonna be impressed. All right, so let's head on over to uh, some different pins. How many different pins you got bucks in, five or six? We've got five, because we have got 90 yearling bucks this year. Goodness gracious, all right, let's take a look at some other outstanding bucks. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Big Time Whitetails and Exotics, LE Fence, Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and by New Dart. Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. Closed captioning is brought to you by Advanced Deer Genetics. All right, so not only do y'all breed for the genetic breeding value, okay, and you're trying to go towards that SS marker, but you're also now taking a more of an aggressive stance towards growing more typical deer, right? Yeah, we're trying to clean our deer up a little bit. We've got the size, the mass, the spread. Uh, we partnered with Rowdy down there at Blessed Bayou just to bring that in and clean our deer up a little bit. and. Um, We'll see how it does in the next few years. They're bringing semen in to help build the deer more typical down the road. And I mean, for example, this year, that's gotta be a yearling right there, isn't it? Yeah. That's a stud right there. I mean, that is beautiful. He's got a little extra stuff going on, but he is beautiful. Who's he out of? So that one would be out of a little legend buck that we had a few years ago, which goes back to high heat. Okay, so high heat, that buck was from uh, heat shower down in Texas, okay? And you've seen a lot of deer on our show this season that are actually coming out of high heat. So he is a really good deer. What are the plans for him? So we'll keep him, uh, see what he does at two years old. And uh, we might be a breeder. We might end up selling him as a breeder to somebody or he might end up being a stalker for somebody. Yeah, that's a beautiful buck right there. I want to take a look at the deer in this pen right here. Who is that guy right there? That is brain power, a yearling that we have this year that we're gonna breed with pretty good. I um, imagine why. So he's got great brow tines, and I just love his boxy frame, and he's got those really unique drop tines on each side that I think we should carry over to his offspring and look really nice. Yeah, I like him too. Did he go back to brain freeze? Yes, he's out of brain freeze. Okay, so we just mentioned to you this other deer out of brain freeze, and brain freeze is uh, 
He's gotten it done. You can go to the North American Deer Registry and see how many offspring and actually who's got them. Brain power, he's got to have at least one S marker. Yes. Okay. So as we're breeding towards the GEBVs and, and the industry, the whole industry is going that way, that guy's helping you get the job done, isn't he? Yeah. All right, so who's that right there? So that is number six. That's another buck that we're probably going to put on some does this fall. And uh, How old is he? That's a one-year-old. Really? Yeah, wow. Yeah, he's, he's great. Yeah, he is great. Okay, pedigree on him. So he's out of a high heat buck we had a few years ago on top of a Secret Service doe. I just hate to interrupt you, but I got to point it out. The Texas market is influencing genetics in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Not just in Kentucky, but all over the place. I mean, people are using genetics from Texas to influence their herds in other states. And I think that's a really cool deal. But we'll probably put him on a few does this fall and see what he turns out like next year. Mm -hmm. I can see why. And so who's this guy right here? So that's number 20. He's a real nice yearling we have. Uh, we actually sold him as a breeder to somebody who's buying some does off of us. Okay, so what are y'all gonna deliver the does open and then deliver him? We'll keep the does until after breeding season and then we'll send them all down the road to him in around January. That's the cool thing about it when you when you deal with somebody like, like Woodard Whitetails of Kentucky. Okay, you come out here, you make your own deal. I mean, everybody's got a different deal. Some people want open does, some people want just a breeder buck, some people want bread does, okay? And in this case, people want does and that guy right there is a breeder buck. Yeah. We, uh, we went to Woodard's Whitetails uh, just actually yesterday, uh, met up with Dustin. He gave us a, a tour of not only the entire facility, but uh, we went through, looked through a lot of the pedigrees on the does, and then also walked through each individual uh, pens of the bucks, checking out what we saw there. Made a lot of great suggestions to us, and really just, there was nothing rushed about the process. Dustin took whatever time we needed to get prepared and check what we wanted before we moved on to the next pens. I put a, a good package together there, got about six does and a uh, nice breeder buck, so uh, we're, we're looking to get going and anxious to see what, what comes of next year, really. Okay, so if somebody wants more information about coming out here, now tell them the telephone number. It'd be 304-698-5798. I've been getting tours nonstop. When we get back from the break, we're gonna head over to the Kentucky Alternative Livestock Association annual picnic, and we'll introduce you to what these guys are doing. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Union Hill Whitetails, the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, and the North American Deer Farmers Association. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube. Now some great information on fencing from our friends at LE Fence. Hey guys, this is Ron with LE Fence here. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're putting an overhead up in this gate area solely because we're trying to hinge the gate off of the side without the brace. Reason we're doing this is because we've got the trees right here and we don't want to take any of the space and take the trees out of here. We want to leave the tree coverage for the deer. So in order to do this, we got to raise the pipes up a little bit, give about two feet of clearance over our gate and then weld a horizontal pipe between the two uprights. In doing so, we're going to be able to hang the gate off of the far post and that's going to take all the pressure off of the single post and distribute it through the overhead and the brace. That way we can fold the gate open and shut and we don't have to worry about a sagging post. So if you ever need a solution on how to hang a gate but you don't have all the room for the brace, if you can do an overhead in there, you'll be good to go. So thanks a lot guys. My name is Jason Becker. I'm the president of the Kentucky Alternative Livestock Association, and it's a great day to be a Kentucky deer farmer. We're here at the 2022 Kentucky Summer Showcase. Our organization's goal is to protect and preserve deer farming in the state of Kentucky, and this is our annual event to raise funds for that effort. So membership is really important to us. Uh, there's a strength in numbers, and in the state of Kentucky, this is an exciting market. We have a lot of growth. Every year, we have a lot of new deer farmers. And it's important for them to, to join our organization because as one unified effort, it helps a lot when we speak to the State Department of Agriculture, 
the Department of Fish and Game, having a strength in numbers really helps our cause to help our, our main focus of protecting and preserving the rights of deer farmers here in Kentucky. So it is exciting being a deer farmer here in Kentucky. We are one of only a couple of states that uh, have not had CWD detected in the state, which allows us to sell to most any other state that does not have closed borders. And that really helps the deer sales. The state of Kentucky has actually been importing bucks to supply the preserves in our state. So there's a shortage of bucks in Kentucky. The more deer farmers we have, the, the less we have to import into the state. We have a great market for buck sales, doe sales, anything you can imagine in deer farming. It's just a really good market here in Kentucky. As far as our market within the state, our stockers are at high demand. We have many new preserves opening up. We've been growing at a pretty substantial rate within the state boundaries. Um, we're one of the only states within the United States that is CWD free, which makes it a very uh, desirable place for a lot of the preserves to open up because they like the more uh, freedom of not having to worry about it so much within the boundaries. If you need information on joining Kayla, you can get on our website. It is Kayla at ky.net. You can get on there to join or to find out information about Kayla. Well, we hope to talk to all the new Kentucky deer farmers whenever you get ready to. For more information on deer farming opportunities in Kentucky, you can contact the Kentucky Alternative Livestock Association. If you want to learn more about deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube. Okay, so you've got property and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in-house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project. All the while, keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.